In our previous video, we took a look at strings and string literals. And this is a case where we have one series of characters, and we want to store that series of characters in a variable. But what if we want to store multiple strings in a variable? For example, what if I say string passengers equals, and then we'll say Bob. Okay. But now I want to say passengers equals passengers plus Sharon. Okay, could do that. But you see, now I actually just have one string called passengers Bob Sharon. It doesn't indicate that these are two different individuals. Okay, well, maybe I could put a comma between them, but then I kind of get a comma separated list. And gosh, I'd really like a way to say that uh, Bob and Sharon are both passengers, and there may be more. Now, by the way, what if I did this? If I did this, then we would start with passengers equals Bob. Then we would overwrite Bob with Sharon. So it wouldn't be both Bob and Sharon as passengers. It would be Bob for a millisecond, and then Sharon as soon as this line executes. So that's not going to work either. We need some dynamic way that we can account for uh, multiple passengers as separate identities, as separate strings. So for that, we need a string array. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say string passengers, whoops, I'm going to do a little bit of typing here, string passengers equals new string. But a few things we're going to do differently. First of all, we're going to put square brackets on the front and also on the end. And this indicates that we are going to store multiple strings in this variable called passengers, not just one. How many strings? Well, that's what we have to put on the right side. We have to decide how many strings we want to store. We'll say up to six. On the left side, we don't need to put a number. Just the indication of square brackets says this is going to be an array type. I can put the square brackets after the variable name, or I can put them after the type string. It doesn't make any difference either way. That one's kind of weird in Java. You're actually allowed to do it one of two ways. Uh, both work the same. But I can't have more than six passengers because that's the capacity I've allocated here. Now, how do I say I want to store uh, the first passenger? Well, an important note is we start counting with zero. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the variable we've declared here and say passengers and then square bracket and then zero because remember we start counting with zero. Now we're looking at only the zero element within this passenger's string array collection. So I can treat this just like I could treat a normal string variable. I can say passenger zero equals Bob. Okay, terminate with the semicolon. Passengers one, which would be our second passenger equals Sharon. Terminate with the semicolon. Passengers 2 equals 3. And terminate with the semicolon, just like so. And we can keep going, provided that we don't go to more than 6 elements, which would actually be 0 through 5. If we try to access the 7th element, which doesn't exist, we're going to get something called an array index out of bounds exception, which means we're trying to go beyond the parking spaces that have been allocated for this array. So we want to start with zero uh, end with five, given that we've allocated six. If we don't go all the way up to six, that's fine, no problem. We are allocating parking spaces we're not using, so it's not an efficient use of memory, but nonetheless, it's not going to cause a problem beyond that. So that's an array. If I wanted to print something, I could say something like this. I could say uh, J option pane. Show message dialog, and then I'll say null, and then I could say welcome. We'll put that in quotes rather. Welcome, and then plus, and then passenger, passenger zero. So if I wanted to send a welcome message to the first passenger, I can send a welcome message with this J option pane. Show message dialog. Okay, so this is just a way to show a little confirmation, and I just happen to pick passenger zero. Let's see what happens when I run this. Welcome, Bob. And then it will continue, and it will prompt us through the rest of the program. 
Let me run it one more time, but instead of passenger zero, I'm going to say passengers one. We'll save and we'll run this again. Welcome Sharon. So you see this time it pulled that second string off the array. And of course, as you might expect, if I go to passengers two, it will say welcome three. We'll go ahead and do that really quickly here. Passengers two, right click, run, and welcome three. You see, I've kind of done some iteration here. I've iterated over this collection. So if you're working ahead a little bit, you see for loops and while loops, you can kind of see where we're eventually going to go with this, but nonetheless um, does what we want at this moment. Okay, one other thing I wanna show is a little shortcut that's not well known. What if I want to take all of this and I want to do it in one line? Well, that's entirely possible as well. So let's say string, and then I need to give this a unique name because you know we cannot assign a, we cannot give two different variables the same name. So I'll say my passengers equals. Now take a look at this curly brace. We'll put them in a. We'll use different names this time. We'll say Beth, and then we'll say Bugsy, and then we'll say Kaz, like so, and terminate with a semicolon. So what have we done here? Open curly, close curly, semicolon, a series of string literals separated by commas. On the left side, we have our string with the open and close square bracket, which indicates that this is an array. So in this case, we have assigned Beth, Bugsy, and Kaz to a string array called My Passengers, and that string array has three elements. Element zero is Beth, element one is Bugsy, element two is Cas. So let's now change the prompt to say my passengers and let's see what happens when it tries to access element number two which is actually the third item in the list. I save and I run and what do we get? Welcome Cas. So you see this is a little shortcut that we can use to declare an and assign an array of strings in line. This is one that I used to talk about many, many years ago, back in 2001, 2002, when it was fairly common. Didn't really talk about it much for a while because I didn't see it in use much, but I've seen this one get used a lot more frequently in Android programming now, especially when dealing with permissions. So I think it's worthwhile to bring this one up again. So that's a quick look at string arrays in Java. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.